In the first four sections of the Blender Topology course, we covered the very basics of topology, then we modeled a sci-fi pistol to understand the various modeling tools and some key techniques for getting the perfect topology. After that, we understood about some common mistakes that we can make if we don't care much about the topology and we even created a number of different shapes while also understanding about the booleans, bevel, subdivision and other modifiers. Then we created a simple scene with an open book and a pair of glasses on it and Finally, from this video onwards, we'll be starting with the section number 5 of this course where we'll be modeling a sword and use it to understand the concept of retopology. So to begin with, we first need to add a reference image of a sword in our 3D viewport and I'll be using this particular image which even you can download from the link in the description or else if you want, you can choose any other image of a sword as the reference image to be used in the scene. For now, I'll first delete this cube from here, then press shift A, go to image and select the reference image. Now open that particular folder where you downloaded the reference image then select it and press enter to confirm. Now we'll be using the blocking out technique to use this reference image so that we can form the complete model and if you remember we used the blocking out technique in the last video as well while modeling a pair of glasses. So for now let's go to the front view then select the image to reset the rotation press alt r and then we'll rotate it in the x axis by 90 degrees. Now to begin with the actual modeling we'll be adding a cylinder in the scene. By using the cylinder object we'll basically be modeling the blade part first. So press shift A then go to mesh and select the cylinder. Let's go to the edit mode and scale it down like this and left click. And now we'll begin the actual modeling process. So first of all let's align the cylinder properly with the sword. After that let's go to the edit mode, select the vertices on the top, press E to extrude them, then left click, let's slightly scale them up, then again extrude them in the Z axis like this, left click and scale them up slightly. It is important to note here that you can also make this by directly selecting these vertices which were previously on the top and moving them up at once. However, it is always suggested to have more details in the geometry in the form of these cuts and the changing of scale in order to make the object look much more detailed and realistic. After this, let's now select these vertices on the bottom and do the same procedure for the bottom part. So press E to extrude them down in the Z axis, let's scale it down slightly, extrude them again, also scale them down like this, repeat the same procedure, slightly scale them down again and finally I'll extrude them down to the bottom like this, then left click, let's scale this down again and finally we now have to create the tip of the sword. For this, I'll apply the extrusion one last time in the z-axis. After this, we'll merge these vertices together into a single vertex on the top. So with all of them selected, press M and select merge at center. This will basically merge all the selected vertices into a single one. And after this, we'll finally have the basic structure of the sword's blade completely ready in the scene. Now you might be thinking that a real life sword is not cylindrical in shape and that is completely true. So what we'll do is to go to the side view, press A to select all and let's scale this down in the Y axis. Then left click and this will make the sword's blade a lot thinner. Now back to the front view, if you don't want this lower part of the sword's blade to be too much pointy, then to solve this issue, we need to add a loop of vertices above this vertex. And to do this, we cannot use the loop cut tool because if I try that by pressing Ctrl R, then this will give us only a single vertex on one of the edges. So let's undo this and now we'll be using the knife tool to achieve the result. So press K to turn on the knife tool, then press C to turn on the cut through, then left click here, then move to the other end, left click here also and press enter to confirm. This will form a loop of vertices like this and then we'll select this vertex over here and move it slightly upwards in the Z axis in order to make this lower end less pointy. Now after we are done with the tip of the sword and the rest of the blade, we'll move to the next part which is also below this grip or the handle of the sword and it is also known as the guard of the sword. So to begin with modeling it, let's first return back to the object mode and we'll again add a cylinder in the scene. So press shift A then go to mesh and select the cylinder. Let's go to the edit mode, scale this down and we'll move it and place it over here. Then switch back to the edit mode, scale it down further, then rotate this in the Y axis by 90 degrees. Let's scale it down further and after this, we'll again use the process of extrusion to complete this model. So first of all, let's turn on the X-ray mode by pressing Alt Z, select these vertices over here, press E to extrude them like this, scale them down, press G to move them downwards like this and adjust their position. After this, again press E to extrude until this end and now over here, you have two options. You can either use a UV sphere over here and then connect it to the vertices of the cylinder but another way which is much easier will be to press E to extrude this until this point then press Ctrl R to add some loop cuts over here like this then scale them up in the Z axis or maybe to make this look even better, let's undo 
do this and now I'll add some more loop cuts let's say 6 or 8 for even more detailing now let's scale this up again in the z-axis like this then left click now let's zoom in and we'll select only these vertices press O to turn on the proportional editing tool press G to move them up and by default the circle of influence of the proportional editing tool is of a very high size so to reduce it you have to use the scroll wheel so if you keep scrolling up then after some time you will see the circle of influence which basically defines that whatever lies in its area will get influenced by the movement of these vertices but over here we only want the neighboring vertices of the selected ones to be influenced so I kept the circle of influence of a very small area now in a similar way I'll now select the bottom vertices over here press G to move them again downwards like this and finally adjust the position properly in order to complete the modeling of this part of the guard also it is not really compulsory that you have to be very precise about the shape and the geometry because we don't need the model to be 100% perfect and also we can later on apply the subdivision modifier to smooth out the geometry. For now, I'll be selecting all these vertices over here. Also, turn off the proportional editing tool by pressing O and after this, press E to extrude them like this. Let's slightly scale them up, extrude them again until this point. After this, just like we did for the blade of the sword, we'll be scaling down the guard as well to reduce its thickness so I've selected all these vertices till here then let's go to the top view by pressing 7 on the numpad let's scale this down in the Y axis by pressing SY and left click and finally this is how the guard of the sword looks moving ahead let's now select these vertices over here scale them slightly downwards let's also move them like this press E to extrude them scale them up and we are doing all this to align them properly with the reference image or the sketch as much as possible so let's again extrude it until we reach around the middle let's scale this up like this move it down in the Z axis and once we reach close to the middle we'll be using the mirror modifier to make the rest of the geometry so for this go to the modifier properties click on add modifier and in the generate select the mirror modifier now it appears like this because the origin point of the model is over here which also makes it the default center point for the mirror modifier but to fix this we need to reposition this origin point to somewhere in the middle of the sword and to do this thing we first need to place a 3d cursor over here so hold down the shift key then right click here to add the 3d cursor and now with this selected go to the object menu on the top then set origin and select origin to 3d cursor this will ensure that this origin point of the selected object is at the position of the 3d cursor which is in the center after this turn on the clipping option in the mirror modifier go to the edit mode and with these vertices selected let's move them in the x-axis to join them together let's also apply the mirror modifier from here and apart from this if you feel like adjusting any of the vertices of any part of either the sword's blade or maybe the guard of the sword then you can do that to make the model look better now let's return back to the object mode and now the next thing that we'll do will be to model the grip or basically the rest of the handle of our sword so press shift a go to mesh and add a cylinder let's switch to the edit mode scale this down like this then go back Back to the object mode let's move it up in the z-axis and place it over here then go to the edit mode again and we'll be using the extrusion and other tools like scaling moving to model the grip of the sword so first of all let's select this bottom part extrude it downwards in the z-axis like this then extrude again and let's scale this up like this then for the top select these vertices scale them slightly downwards extrude them till this point scale down again extrude it over here let's scale it slightly upwards after this press e to extrude it like this scale it down and continue this process until you reach the top part now just like we did for the guard we can either extrude till the end at once and then add some loop cuts and scale this region up however a much better approach to extrude slowly for each part individually like this and scaling it up so simply press e to extrude and s to scale it up like this press e again scale it up then press e slightly scale it down because now we are reaching the top part of the sword script finally let's scale this down like this let's also move it slightly downwards and return back to the object mode with this we now have the base basic mesh of the sword ready in the scene it has three parts in total the blade of the sword the sword's handle and the guard all created by using the blocking out technique with the reference image now if you want to convert it into a single object then first of all we need to remove the gap that these three parts are having in between them so for this i'll first select the blade and select these vertices on the top move them up in the z axis like this and after this select the grip go to the edit mode select these vertices over here press e to extrude them down in the z axis like this and now we are ready to join them together into a single object so first i'll select the grip then with the shift key hold it select the guard and then select the blade of the sword at last now press ctrl g to join them together into a single object with the name cylinder in the scene collection and here this also brings us to the end of this video in the part one we created the basic mesh for a sword that will later allow us to understand about the concept of free topology in blender and now in the part number two of this 
this section, which will be the next video, we'll be adding the details in the SWORD model by sculpting and other tools. And then in the video following it, we'll understand about the retopology and we'll use it on the SWORD model. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel, press that notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming videos. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.